it somewhat. We've never had a real all-star game in 14, 15 seasons. Yeah. Well, I feel like the team that spells out an actual word with their heroes should win, but yeah. I mean, the real the real way you win is you just don't you 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 uh, choose to levy no bans and random all your heroes. That's true. True. Immediately banning Matt's Razor. Truly unfortunate. So, uh, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, um, hello and welcome back to the Learn Dota 2 League All-Star game. This time we're looking at, like, the actual proper, proper non-celebrity version of this game. We've got Team Kai taking on Team Mickle. Uh, both pause ones of their respective, uh, clans here. And with us here we have Buttery Greg, the admin of the league. Hello. And we've got definitely, actually, I promise you, it's really meth this time. We'll see at the end of the game. Yeah, we. I mean, everybody saw. We'll, they, we'll see at some point. Everybody saw who you really are. They looked at chat, but you know, those of you who are watching on YouTube couldn't have looked at chat. So. That's true. No enigma. No sniper. Just have to come back next season with an Irish accent and still confuse everybody. Oh, fella, it's me. Whoever I'm pretending to be at that point. <laughs> Top of the morning to y'all. We're banning out. Where the fuck is the blank dagger on that darn enigma? <laughs> fuck out of Christ. <laughs> we banned out two good like Matt heroes from Mickle here. You can really tell Mickle's in charge because Mickle, after having played a whole season with a guy like Matt, really respects the guy. But hurry, Greg, right, you've okay, no. but hurry, Greg, you've played a <laughs> you've played a wee bit with God like Matt. What do you think of the player? I think he's really good. Um, he's a great yeah. offlaner. He is. I uh, I picked him offlane this season. He did really good until I told him not to pick LC in a game, and then he did anyway. No, well, that that can't be helped. Sometimes they just pick LC. But you know, uh, he was always really, really solid. In and Fluffy had uh, we had a we had a rough season. That was the um, Pendleton season. Yeah, um, that's when he yeah. uh, that's when he did the thing. That's when he did the thing. Um, you know, outside of that, uh, Matt was great to play with. We had a lot of fun playing pubs. Uh, First pick punch. Likely gonna be for the bush here. I gotta be honest. I don't think I actually. I mean, it might be Mickle. We've seen Mickle, and actually Vex. So actually, any of the three cores could be playing this budge. And before that's actually just another Matt deny pick? I mean, yeah, it definitely is. They just don't want Matt to end up on the pudge. Picking up the Lena here. I assume that's for Danny. Could be for, uh... For Dusty there as well, who is playing boss for for this lineup. And Rubik. PVC pipe, of course, standing in here. Knowing Matt, he's like, I'm totally fine with this. I have enough heroes. The Rubik here. I like uh, I like Rubik as a response to Pudge. Being able to just turn the hook around is always a nice little thing. You can definitely, uh, if you're an experienced season Rubik player, shout out to the train. One all, one always funny trick is you know Pudge hooks somebody else on your team and then you just use the hook to just get them out, <laughs> which is always fun. Or counterplay, Pudge hooks them, you hook Pudge. Pudge dismembers you, you die. <laughs> <laughs> you wonder why you got out of bed this morning. Look, I never said it was the best of ideas, I said it was an idea. <laughs> cryptic Oracle coming out. Matt, used to playing with the Cryptic Oracle, is now going to have to work against it this time. Yeah. Cryptic has many a triple kill from our season. <laughs> Just on that Oracle here. Oh. No Phoenix. Although Danny has to play against it now as well. Yeah, that's true. Danny uh, standing in for, I believe, London. I don't know if London is, like... <laughs> I didn't hear anything about needing a stand in a mid. I, I do kind of still think maybe he was Danny just joined this lobby and everyone just went with it. Five seconds. I have no idea. Because <laughs> he's not the third place for me. I really hope that's what happened, dude. I'm, I am I know it's probably not the case. I know London was like, dude, I can't be there. Just get Danny or something. And, and that's just how it went. It would be really funny, though, if US Danny just slid into the lobby and nobody said anything about it. Yeah. Getting rid of the disruptor here. Do not want to see the Hollywood disruptor. Not a bad idea, I mean. It might be the Hollywood Pudge. I feel like if you uh, put Hollywood into a corner, he's going to pick the Pudge. But I think Hollywood picking the Pudge is actually a pretty good way to just take Pudge off the table. I cannot say. 
Hollywood playing Pudge is probably the best use of him on this team. More anti-Matt bans. Literally every ban on Dyer has been at Matt so far. Ten seconds remaining. Five Boy. seconds remaining. Dire team ban. Rana being banned out here. Another Hollywood ban. So it is very likely that Hollywood's just gonna have to uh, lean on the Pudge here, which means core Pudge. It's not on the table here, which is cause for celebration, I think, for everybody involved on the Radiant. Radiant team ban. OD ban. It's not really a Matt hero per se. I think that's a Danny ban, actually. So there you go. Four bans, God like Matt, one ban, US Danny, zero bans Kai, which is a bit concerning. I know I, I mean, hammered. Can you really ban Kai out? You just not sort of really. ban heroes that are good in that. Yeah. Scenario. You know, I hammered Mickle in the season 13 playoffs for banning literally nothing but Kai heroes and letting uh, letting everybody else on his team kind of just go through for free, but uh, this is not really much of a better alternative. Okay, so this is going to be a Coralina. It looks like uh, probably... US that's that's probably just Kai Alina. It could be And Kai he'll play Alina. it 1 through 5. It could be. But and then US buy bots Alina. and then just farm side lanes the entire game. He could do that. Could be, uh, could be Kai Lena, could be US Danny Lena, US Danny, one of the uh, Lena remaining. spammers of this league. I mean, not recently, though. Recently, he's been a Necro spammer, but he did not bring that. He brought the silencer instead. It didn't work. Okay, so we do have confirmation from Cheeseburger that London could not make it. It is still funny to me. I, I, I choose not to uh, I choose not to acknowledge that. I choose to live in my uh, my own reality. Get the bushes awkward knocked out there as well. <laughs> Snapfire coming up, just the instant knee jerk you have whenever you see an undying, which is gonna move the pudge to a core position. Unless they're gonna be doing the bush snapfire, which we have seen him do in the season. This is a common pick for him, yeah. Ten seconds remaining. I don't know if I'm huge on in this game in particular. I feel like, uh, I don't know. There's arguments on both sides. Maybe it's better core here. I, I, I feel like a support snapfire against a Rubik is just going to give a support snapfire to the enemy team as well, basically. So who knows? Whereas with the core snapfire, you're running that risk. You're, you know, getting your face shredded off and all that. Greg, what do you think of these lineups so far? Um, I think it's a little strange to first pick Lena and follow it up with two supports. Because now they've had a lot of time to counter a core Lena. True. But on the other hand, uh, you know the Windrunner there, That's that might be Mikkel Windrunner. Mikkel doing his best Otto von Bismarck impression. Can't really fi figure out where that would fit in otherwise. The Good Bush also me. plays that hero. Yeah, it could be to Bush, but then where's the other guys going? We gotta have a Five core pudge after all. Remaining. I don't know if I like core pudge into uh, into this lineup here. I guess yeah, we I got the orc. Has to be core pudge. Oh, true, true. That definitely has to be a core. I'm pretty sure the uh, core snapfire is like dead as a concept, so. On the other hand, Debush still plays it. Doesn't matter how dead it is if uh, Debush will still willingly run it. In fact, Debush could potentially be any of the heroes on the Dire except for Oracle so far. Because <laughs> all three of these guys are in his pool. Well, Alright then, he'll keep Kai guessing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's... I mean, it is a very big... Um, you know, what the hell is going on play to do on the Dyer's part. <laughs> Basically completely obfuscating exactly how this team is actually going to be laid out. A lot of flex power here. Obfuscating. Stop yeah. using your massive vernacular. I got the Bloodseeker coming up. Godlike map Bloodseeker. I... Mm, it's good against Windrunner, but I think it's kind of 
Okay, it can be good against Pudge, too, once no. you get HP balloon. Because <laughs> until you get level 3, Pudge can just press E and negate all of your rupture damage. Well, the rupture, what I'm saying isn't the rupture damage, though. It's, uh, he, ha he has that shard that gives him the percentile damage on his right Oh, well, leg, that, which, uh, yeah. Yeah, blows up Pudge. Very short order. I don't think you're going to rupture Pudge anyway. He's not going to run, <laughs> so... Like, I mean, I don't oh, think that really matters. The the silence on him. Try to run. Silence kind of sucks for Pudge to deal with, and the percentile damage can be pretty bad for him. So it's not terrible, but on the other hand, if he hooks Bloodseeker, Bloodseeker is basically 100% dead. And I don't know if I'm ever that big on Bloodseeker for Oracles in the game. Dire team back. Void knocked out. PL gone down. Although the shard with an Oracle will give that man like his entire health bar in three hits. 6% of Pudge's H bar, HP bar per hit as healing is a lot of healing. Ten seconds remaining. Ironically, you actually have kind of negative synergy there between the Five Undying and the Bloodseeker. Undying's gonna have to be a little careful about how, who he chooses to uh, use his Q on during fights, because nothing is gonna make Bloodseeker sadder than suddenly his percentile damage and lifesteal dropping dramatically every hit. Eh, it's still percentile damage, he won't care that much. It's true. But it is disproportionately affected. If Fudge gets down to like a thousand HP, Bloodseeker's gonna cry. Yeah, and then he's just gonna kill him because he hits him for like a hundred damage a hit. It's true. Fudge gets down to a hundred HP, well, everyone's it's like, it's gonna, gonna be like, uh, It's only gonna be like 20 damage at that point, it's like 4%. PA, uh, I'm not PA talking man. about the percentage, I'm talking about the rest of his damage. He's gonna have a Maelstrom, he's gonna have a Basher, he's gonna have like 300 damage besides. Got a PA ban, got the Axe knocked out here. The Axe? Why'd they ban Axe? We assuming it's Danny Matt. Bloodseeker? I guess it's possible. Matt bans. Yeah. I don't know. Just, just in case he's faking it, just in case he's not actually gonna pick the Bloodseeker for some reason. I mean, it could be a situation like uh, being 10 had where they random the last pick. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt had to play Tide yep. Hunter instead. Radiant team. I mean, things happen. Troll Warlord. That uh, Mickle, do you did you forget, bro? Did <laughs> did the memory leave your skull of what happened last time you picked a hero like this against Kai? <laughs> it didn't go well. He has a very good hero for this. I would be shocked and astounded if... We, oh, wait, no, he doesn't have a good... We first banned Razor! Okay, so Mikkel has learned from the past. There we go. I actually forgot about that. I wasn't even considering it as a Kai ban. See, Mikkel's got me there, actually. Look at me. I got I got owned by, uh, by, by Mikkel live on stream. Unfortunate. <laughs> Mikkel, who, by the way, will be joining us uh, next week when we uh, start the EU, the uh, LD2L EU4 extravaganza at the Weaver. standard LD2L Sunday 5 p.m. Eastern start time. We got a Weaver coming up. I don't know if I like the Weaver too much this game. He can reset the fight against the Oracle. That's good. He can reset the fight with the Snapfire old and potentially the Windrunner if he lives that. That's all good. I feel like that's basically the exhaustive list of his upsides here. I don't think I like Edward that much against Troll. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Ah, welcome back. Oh no, I was just like loading assets there. Why are you loading ass? I don't know. This Dota makes me. Dota changes you. Don't do that. I like how everybody's got <laughs> everybody's got cosmetics except the Undying and the Snapfire, which are in the middle. I mean, Snapfire doesn't have cosmetics. Like, the hero itself just does not have that many cosmetics, so unless yeah, you're paying true. for the $80 cosmetic. It's just, uh, it's just funny, everybody else has some wacky, gigantic, uh, I, they both have the Roche escape thing. Everybody else has some wacky, over-the-top aesthetic going on, and then you have vanilla Undying and vanilla Snapfire. Prepare for battle. Ooh, okay, um... Yeah, I think I, overall, especially with the Vex Pudge, that's probably the best place I could have stuck it with uh, how early they picked it. Um, I think 
This game is going to be really dependent on how Godlike Matt does on the Bloodseeker. I think if if Bloodseeker like pops off, if he gets hard to deal with, if he gets hard to kill, it's going to be real trouble for anybody on the Dire to do much of anything to him. Sure, Troll Warlord can get to the point where Bloodseeker is not going to kill him. If you guys win this game, I'm updating my Bean Team review. Excellent. Um, it's not like Troll Warlord is going to gonna necessarily kill uh bloodseeker but blood you know bloodseeker can't really kill him that well either it's kind of just a mutual nothing's happening here type situation but like troll warlord's not gonna do anything if his whole team dies around him and bloodseeker can kind of make that happen but if bloodseeker doesn't have a really good game uh, it's kind of hard to see the path for victory for the radiant here now building your house on the mat raft here building your house on the foundation of matt is a strategy that does not go wrong very often you know the thing i said about matt when he joined the league in season 12 is that he's somebody who can run with the ball and i think he's been basically proving that ever since so it's not a bad strategy to try and uh, chain the cart to that particular horse but that's a lot of weight on the guy here i think I don't know what the Weaver really does in this game. I don't know. Lena can do okay, but, like, it has to be a really good Lena performance for her to be able to, like, live in these fights without anybody who's going to be able to frontline even a little bit on the team, basically. I mean, Undying, Bloodseeker, both can frontline. Yeah, they can frontline. They're not good. Like, they're not great frontliners. They're certainly not tanky as, like, a Lena wants. Lena is so fragile. You want, like, a big fat dude. You want, like, a tight hunter there. Lena wants to get items is not that t fragile. Cryptic getting chased down. He's fine. So, with that being said, it's time for our actual uh, roll call here. So, for the uh, Radiant All Star lineup for Team Kai, pause one, captain of the team. On Weaver, getting stunned by the cookie, you've got Kai, who uh, has now finally broke his cursed streak, won this season, um, on the Weaver, formerly of the uh, Crusader Knights. Pause 2, standing in for London, you have U.S. Danny on the Lena, formerly of Bean 10, London formerly of the Crusader Knights as well, now a uh, two-time champion. No, Pause 3, you've got Godlike Matt, formerly of Bean 10, on the Bloodseeker. Pause 4, you've got Dusty, formerly of the Crusader Knights, on the Rubik. And Pause 5, you've got PVC Pipe, who is standing in for Rock Zero Row. PVC Pipe, formerly on the Grim Adventures of Boys and Matty. Um, Rock Zero Row on Thug Wood. I'm still my joke. What joke? Denied. The joke where you changed the name of Grim Adventure of Matt. And oh, Matt I was I was doing that before you were on the show. I've been calling them that since the start of the season because I think that's just a better name than the one they chose. Because, you know, Boys and Maddie, Billy and Mandy. Anyway, um... So, on the Dire, on Team Mickle, pause one, you've got the man himself, Mickle, uh, formerly sponsored by Charles V. I believe he has now lost his Habsburg ties as he is now sponsored by no one because this game isn't ticketed. On the Troll Warlord... Uh, formerly of the Grim Adventures, pause two, you've got DeBush, formerly of Thug Wood, on the Windrunner. Pause three, you've got Vex of the Crusader Knights on the Pudge. Pause four, you've got Thug Wood of his namesake team, that's Hollywood, on the Snapfire. And pause five, you've got Cryptic of Bean 10 on the uh, Oracle, facing two of his former teammates in Godlike Matt and U.S. Danny. I think for the most part, uh, very agreeable all-star selection this year. There's some that I uh, I found a little questionable, but for the most part, I think uh, a pretty fair selection of guys here. Okay, Kai's randomly going to die. It was pretty unlucky. I thought they were uh, kind of crushing them in that lane, and I managed to get caught. Kills, in, uh, kills or fights in all three lanes going on right now. So we're starting this game off with a little chaos. If I was CK, this would be the greatest moment of my life. Lena's gonna take out the Windrunner here. Lena is down for last hits, but is up for denies, and getting that kill is going to definitely put the advantage in Lena's pocket. Death tax. 
Kai tips Pudge. The two guys on uh, on the Crusader Knights who had the most arguments, Kai and... Oh my god, can I see one kill maybe? That would be really cool! I saw it. Tro well, that's good. Troll Whirl are gonna take out the Pudge. Or not the Pudge, gonna take out the Bloodseeker. He's not gonna team kill. Uh, everybody tips Matt now. Unfortunate. Indeed. You know, Troll Warlord has some pretty good uh, Dota Plus chat wheel lines. Maybe at some point I'm going to do as a uh, as a public service a live review of all the uh, the heroes Dota Plus chat wheel lines and how worthwhile they are. I'll, I'll give you a hint: the worst is Centaur War Runner. He has like no good lines at all. I'm just really getting bullied by this undying and high physical damage combo. Yeah, no surprise here. You know, I've said it before, I've said it, I'll say it again. The Weaver Undying combo is like an off lane you can put in your safe lane. It is such a nasty pair of just bruisers. And there's not many off lanes. It's like, not many off lanes want to see Undying, and not many off lanes want to see Weaver. You put them together, and nobody wants to see that crap. <laughs> Missed another kill. I'm gonna get kicked out to death, dude. This is the end of my streaming career. You should really stop missing kills. Maybe. See, all that it needs to help. happen is uh, everybody needs to stop just continuing to play lane at like 30% HP randomly and for like 10 minutes and then they just suddenly die. Pudge trapped between a rock and a hard place here. Uh, as it turns out, Lena used the R button on the Wind Ranger who has low HP. And oh, Wind Ranger died. Who would have thought? Pudge has to uh, take a TP all the way to home here. He's gonna have to take the walk of shame back to his lane. Oh, this looks like yes. curtains for Rubik. I'm gonna see a kill. Are you? Maybe. Yeah. Healing. The the. Uh... <laughs> you got the Oracle heal. Nope, never mind. God damn. It. <laughs> Be better next time. time. The one time, dude! <laughs> See, uh... <laughs> Greg, I don't know if you've, uh, if you've, if you've watched our commentary for All-Star Games in the past, but, uh... We take it a little easy on this particular day. <laughs> good. I mean, that's the point of All-Star Games, so... All good fun. Yeah, this was when, uh, I believe the All-Star game was Bean's commentary debut, where she started talking about pirates and board games and what have you. God damn! The bush is, uh, not having the best day over at mid. Well, here's here's how it goes. Lena has four points in Dragon's Life and, uh, has a single point in Laguna Blade. Um, that alone is 80% of Wind Ranger's HP bar. Good, uh, yeah, good use. Right. Good use of Oracle's purge there to knock all the debuffs off of Pudger's head, which means and it looks Pudger's like the bush is refusing to buy uh, the wonderful item called raindrops. Yeah, that's uh, a bit of a miscue there on the bush's part. So because we were watching, uh, well, I was watching that that uh, quite a top. I didn't miss a double kill happening down at bot. This uh, Weaver undying safe lane taking two guys out. Weaver undoubtedly is going to be uh, having a strong presence. Oh, finally got revenge on U.S. Danny. Again, was watching. But, you know, got yeah, some revenge it, on U.S. Danny. As it turns out, focus fire plus a salve and three bottle charges will get you a lot of HP back. Although, his salve almost got cancelled by a single auto attack that Danny missed from the low ground. Sad. Very sad indeed. With the off lane now having been pretty thoroughly demolished, PVC Pipe has decided that there's nothing left for him to do in this world, and has gone to mid. Fuckwood is going to try and uh, beef with Weaver down here. I must say, I don't know if I quite agree with this strategy. Pudge's presence is going to stop the kill, potentially anyway, from happening. That's all she wrote here. Got a bit of uh, funny combat happening up top. Matt tried to go for the uh, courier there. 
Anna has shown up to top here, and Mikkel will be evading. Okay. <laughs> Mikkel will be taking a trip back to the locker room here. Finally going down. That's actually a pretty big kill, and Bloodseeker being beneficiary to that kill is going to be a pretty big deal for the mirror. Like I said, a lot of the success or failure of this Radiant lineup is going to be dependent on how things go for Matt this game, and he does have a spill. He has taken a death, but he just got a kill back, and he's doing very well for himself for last hit, so he's only got the foundation for success. I think Weaver's unexpected smashing of the bot lane probably is not doing them any disservice either. Yeah, as it turns out, Bloodseeker is pretty hard to push out of lane once you've got a bunch of points in that DE ability. You know, you've, uh... You know, I'm... Uh, no disrespect to PvC Pipe here. I think PvC Pipe is, I think, generally underrated in the LD2L community for his uh, support play. But you really do have to wonder how much worse this game could be going if it was uh, Roxy Roro over where PvC is now. Because PvC, like I said, is underrated. Roxy is so good, nobody's going to underrate that guy, so like... Okay, that's not true, a couple of people do, but you know. Very strong opening for the Radiant here. This is exactly what they need to, uh, to keep themselves on the map in this game. And like I said, you know, just because... When I was talking earlier, they their fortunes are tied to uh, Bloodseeker here. That, does, that sounds at its base like a bad thing, but like... Bloodseeker's doing really good, and also the people on his team are doing better than average for this point. That's certainly not a bad position to be in. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. You can see the net worth chart here. It's almost a clean, uh, clean sweep for the Radiant course here, net worth wise. Goodbye, the bush. I actually got to see him die that time, which is good. And then uh, Kai tips Danny, who that those two, by the way, are going to be playing against each other in RD2L finals this Saturday. And it's time for disc usage spike. Radiance bottom tower. Oh, exactly long enough for me to get disconnected. How nice. Well, welcome back. Yeah, I think uh, overall Dyer's kind of just in trouble in this game already at this point. It's looking like a very tough... Well, I mean, it's not looking because they're looking at a black screen right now. But it's looking very tough for uh, for Dyer at this juncture. I think in particular the... Although this fight is going well. A little bit. Yeah, I wish I could see it. This fight is going really well for Dyer. Except the bush going in and just dying. Well, this fight started going really, really well for Dyer, anyway. It, uh, unfortunately has not gone that well for them. Uh, uh, I yeah, mean, the, no. the two most important heroes, Weaver and Lena, are cleaning up every fight. Well, what happened sort of there was it started going well, and then Dyer continued fighting. If they had just taken the three kills they had and left, it would have been great. An overcommitment there. Well, yeah. I think if there is one got... if there is one vice of Hollywood as a Dota player, I do think um he he is very good at encouraging you to overcommit. I've actually had probably a game with a guy now. It's probably um, all the amphetamines. Probably. Bounty. Or I guess in New York they do coke, I don't know. Well, New York, they do both. True, true. They got that, uh, they got that crack rock, you know. Hollywood here in a very awkward spot. Very fortunately, his team is here to, uh, try and cover this one up. That's a really good look, uh, stun there on US Danny. It is going to force the Bush to carefully consider exactly who's going to take the rest of this fight as the rest of his team goes down around him. Good shackle here. Unfortunately, Weaver just got his entire HP bar back, and so 
Nothing more happening. Oh, and here's Bloodseeker from the back line to just ruin everything for the bush. Uh-oh! <laughs> there was one big good news. At least Troll Warlord was uh, farming up for a bit of that. Troll decided to go for a Battle Fury this game. I think that's a little too slow. But uh, to each their own. I mean, hey, that guy, uh, that guy got pause one. You know what? What? If, if you're, if you know better than Mickle, how come you didn't get voted for pause one? I didn't play pause one, you nerd. <laughs> Fuel for my fire. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. That's true. I mean, for all we know, you might as well, you might have not even played any positions. That's true. I am a traditional pause six main. Think about it. That's true. Oh, Weaver, Weaver, really in trouble here. Oh, it's gonna and go down. Solo kill. Really dead now. Solo kill indeed, Thugwood. Very good news for the Windrunner who uh, walks off of what has so far been a very unfortunate game with a nice double kill. Bloodseeker not even close to this fight, which is very unfortunate. Cryptic and a question mark. Bloodseeker is yeah, now yeah, TV dead. Dead. He dodged a Laguna Blade with uh, Fate Seed Dick. Not bad, not bad. Clean up. It's a Wind Ranger getting ruptured. There's any, uh, there's any confident 3-7, nice, damn, Matt. If there's any, uh, certainty we can take from that fight, it's that, uh, Radiant cannot fight without Bloodseeker. Their fortunes were so much worse with Bloodseeker coming in at the very end of that fight. I mean, that fight was entirely just one going in and dying, one going in and dying, one yeah. going in and dying, one going in and dying. But the problem is, is a lot of Bloodseeker there to direct traffic, they don't really have a good way to avoid that happening to them. Like, uh, the way they have to engage on this lineup, Dyer can control the, uh, control the map so well that if you don't have Bloodseeker there to just make a big mess of things and screw with the enemy positioning, that's like the best you got. Huh. And uh, Wind Ranger's now dead. Yeah, just very, very dead. quickly. It's sort of what happens when you use your E to run into the middle of the enemy team and it runs <laughs> yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, after all that, uh, after all that talk in chat that uh, that the Bush was giving to uh, Godlike Matt there, got turned around in kind of a uh, big way. Got the notice me ping here. I think only only an imbecile would use that ping, honestly. Un unless, what, the uh, notice ping? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I don't know who would use that ping. Hey, uh, you're supposed to be meth right now. It's a coded insult at you. I know. <laughs> That's why I started pinging the map. <laughs> Reading gonna go for the rush here. I'm gonna take out the rush by the handle. I'm gonna take the rush. That thing dies fast. Lena gonna take the Aegis here. I cannot disagree with that decision. I can't this is a great Snapfire ultimate, actually. Yeah, I can perhaps disagree with the decision to all stick around in the artillery barrage when you have very low HP. I mean, you say they all stu stuck around. Um, Rather, they Weaver went in there. to win. Oh, well. <laughs> Weaver was not Weaver there, but I don't know if that matters. Generation. No, they all went towards the jungle where Weaver went towards his own triangle and then died with the rest of Poor his deaths. team. So at least they all went to the same place in that, hell. It was all Vex. That was the worst imaginable thing to happen after an Aegis fight. I remember early on in the season where I would, uh, we would watch these Brothers Against NATO games and you would see, you know, one person takes Aegis and then three people like d immediately die and I was like, oh, that's not good, but at least those three people usually weren't four and didn't include the possible one. Well, think about it. The only thing they didn't lose that fight was the Aegis. That's true. That does mean that next team fight, they're going to still be carrying that advantage in, at least if they take in the next three minutes. Shoutouts to chat, by the way, which I am a little too afraid to tab out and look at, and, uh... <laughs> In the fear that I might be getting a uh, another disconnect. Uh, a mystery man, you think you could look at chat for me, make sure uh, we haven't missed anything. Just keep that <laughs> posted. Well, okay, chat's dead. Damn. Damn. So I'm gonna get a. Uh, 
Go to get some. Oh, got a bit of a fight going on here. What do you call the EMT? Uh oh, this is a bad spot for Bloodseeker to be. He's gonna get his rupture out before he goes down. The uh, ninja got ruptured, so she stood still and did nothing. Yep. But click him, obviously. Because that's what Vogue's fire does. Oh, right, we got Mickle going. Oh, Warlord has pressed the suicide button. And, uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> the suicide was committed. Look, what is actually also gonna just die of tower shots here? It happens. Uh, definitely a Hollywood moment. Goodbye, uh, Dusty. Dusty has rage quit. And now we wait. Bing! Bing. Well, alright, if you say so. There you go, that's your ping. Ooh, hey, I'd like to take this time to do a little bit more shilling, because, uh... As we all know, we have not heard enough of that, right? Everybody is very enthralled to hear me talk about uh, the Mage 3 tournament, Magician Tournament number 3, coming up here. The sign-ups are going to be open on December 17th, just a week from today. Sign-ups are going to be going live. Um, tournament starting up January 6th is going to be running through the first half of that month. $5 to get in, three of your $5 are going to the Save the Children Fund out in Somalia. And like I said last time, heard a bit of rumblings uh, about matching the donation from Mr. Magician. And we'll be talking a little bit more about a special added bonus. Actually, even Magician himself does not know about this at the end of this game. So if you're following that at all, make sure to stay tuned. We're back in the game now. I do gotta say, I do think Matt is maybe being a bit too hasty in his play style in this game. I think he's throwing a lot of caution to the win and a lot of his positioning both before and during these fights. Him going down as early as he is pretty much every time is not great. Like I said, he needs to be able to control traffic in these fights. If Bloodseeker isn't there, if he goes down very quickly, it's very hard for this team to actually control the enemy team's position at all, while the enemy team is very free to uh, control Radiance, so... We were going for a Lungan fire. I'll be good if Rubik uh, joins the enemy team and steals the Rupture. Pudge has True. finished up his Ags. Very big milestone here. He's got Ags and he's got Vanguard, which is gonna... They're smoking safe. into the enemy team here. Yep, smoking right into Bloodseeker. Pudge does not seem to know that he can press E and avoid all of Rupture's damage. Well, he avoided most of the Rupture damage anyway, it seems. Lena actually just got picked offside and immediately lost Aegis. Might immediately lose second life! Lena making a Pudge desperate is play just for. Hanking through everything, Jesus Christ. Lena making a very desperate play to try and stay alive there, but it just did not turn out to uh, go well for her. Weaver now stranded behind enemy lines as uh, Rubik goes down. Got shackled. Got... Ooh, he's Invis. They can't see him, they have no clue. See yeah. out. Ooh, no. that was if so close. If he let close. that charge for a second less. Cryptic wants to die. That If that dust comes off a little earlier, I think they kill him. No, he was dusted from previous. He just was hiding in trees. Yeah. Because they have the... They, they, the dust wears off. They re-dust him, and by the time they do get the second dust out, he's already ran off. Troll Warlord coming in with a blink dagger. Good grief, he's naked. Undying is, anyway. Uh, neither are naked for me. Game is starting to get much, much harder uh, for Radiant, it feels like. Lena's net worth being so low is a bit of an issue. You pick this hero because you wanted to outfarm everybody else on the map, and then just... You didn't. I mean, like I said, it's not damage. not the greatest Lena game in the world. It's and once not again, a bad I'm Lena gonna game. just take a spill here. I mean, the big problem is, like I said, um, like 
Bloodseeker is not really tanky enough to uh, frontline in these fights, as evident by the fact that he's dying immediately every time he shows his face, basically. And if you don't have somebody who can frontline at least a little for you as Lena, it doesn't matter if you can put out a lot of damage, because you're going to go down before that damage gets out. Well, the thing is, these last two fights, he has decided to run at the punch without a BKB. Yeah, that um, hasn't helped. Don't get me wrong, but... I mean, it's like in the in the fight that we had at the at the top tower where Weaver got away by the skin of his teeth. You know, you saw Lena just like at the very start of the fight, Popsy just immediately has to just run around like a chicken with her head cut off to try and avoid that second death, and it just didn't work. There's just there's just nobody there to take the 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 fire off of Lena. Ironically, and Danny is now not dead apparently. Okay, Nickel is not gonna want to commit on that. He does not have a BKB anyway, so he really couldn't if he wanted to. He's not going BKB. He's going S and Y. Yep. So on one hand, I kind of get because probably the one of the worst things that you can deal with is the rupture, and that doesn't matter. Ah, you don't I really like... need a BKB this game. Yeah. Like, you're stopping Rubik from lifting you, and you're stopping yourself getting stunned by Lina. And most and... importantly, you're stopping, perhaps, you're stopping Rubik from getting rid of 35% of your damage output, which is pretty important in Troll Warlord. Not if you press ultimate afterwards. That's true, but do you really want to use ultimate because he got Fade Bolted? <laughs> no, I'm I mean, you say just use it afterwards. You get low, and then you use your ultimate, and it removes the debuff. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the problem is, is that you get no damage done until you're low, which means that, like, all your damage comes out during your uh, blind, dumb deaf idiot phase of the battle, that's not good. <laughs> you do not want your R to be the only time you're doing damage as Troll Warlord, because you can't control who you're beating up, really. Also, Troll has enough damage. That's fine. Getting rid of a that. Lot of... What? What did... What did I just do to pop the Lincolns on Weaver there? Uh, press her ultimate. Oh, you're right, okay. I thought it was, uh, okay, yeah. Probably not how you want to find the Lincolns on Weaver there. Not a great skill to lose. Once again, Definitely US Danny. Definitely not, but that's why the Lincolns exist. Once again, US Danny. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's a joke there, right? The, the Lincolns working out for him in that moment. Once again, US uh, Danny just getting run over before he can really contribute to the fight particularly much at all. The good news is, guy like Matt is, like, primed, ready to go. Bunch tries to get out, goes right down. Oh, we tried to go for the, uh, the tombstone up there, just missed a bunch. And died. Okay. Well, that's not good. Yeah, as it turns out, the more protracted fight the fight is, the better it is for Radiant, because they have the more mobile heroes. Well, that and, uh... Rupture. Yep. The, the Rupture got to not only, like, go down, but be controlled by the Blood Right. Pudge got to be beat up by the Bloodseeker. Not looking and at Tombstone his... Tombstone uh... got a lot of value off in that fight. They, the entirety of Dire Team ran right past that Tombstone. Yep. Yeah, it was on the cliff. So they tried to take... Tried it to take it out the Wind Ranger and the Oracle. Uh, away from the rest of their team, because the three people that could run through it ran through it, and then Staffire ran through it anyway. By the uh, way, I'd like to point out that uh, Hollywood po put a second Sentry Ward up right next to his first one there, even though the first one still has three you. minutes left. Uh, probably because he lost vision, and he wanted more vision, and that was the only ward he had. Sad. Because it took so long to kill. Um, yeah, Hollywood even when he just did rushing a hex here. Okay. That's a very ambitious goal for old Snapfire, I gotta say. Even if things have been looking up for his lineup, he has the lowest net worth hero in the entire game and has really no farming utility at the moment. No farming utility and no good reason to try and do so. Notice me. Oh. Got a, uh, nice uh, hook. Uh, yeah, hooked Windrunner with the Rubik hook. It did not work out. Actually, everyone just kind of died. Yeah. BKB reveal on Bloodseeker. I believe that's his nine. 
Yep. Uh, Vex just tried to hook through two allied heroes. And a creep wave at that battle. U.S. Danny has, uh... No? no They're having a hard died. time figuring out exactly who they should be going for in this fight. Every time somebody shows their face, two people immediately start recalculating. Weaver way back behind enemy lines. But he's Weaver, so it's like... Totally fine. Yeah. Once With again, it's just befuddling the enemy team. They have no idea what they should be doing right now. Try to turn around for the Weaver. They try to turn around for the Lena. They try to turn for the Bloodseeker there. You as Danny pushing in the top lane. Yep. Dyer's Gonna get some. He's, he's drawing the exact enemy team's map movements. They're all running top right now. Circling the Roche pit, thinking that Dyer's they should probably do Roche soon. Wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. Only 100 damage out on this tower, but, well, actually only 400 damage out on this tower. That's not not the best thing in the world, but if you think the game's going to go long, every, like, every little chunk of a T3 you can get is probably good. It's probably the, the thing is that that was just creep. At the... Yeah. Low, low cool. risk investment. It's very small amount of pushing power. Troll World are going to immediately just jump to the Roche bit here. Very forward. My dead. Lena just picked up Beyblade. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. We were just going to be uh, going up the bot here. Picked himself up a four staff. He's going for a hurricane pike. But with Weaver showing on the bot wave, unfortunately, that is emboldened the Dyer to try and take Roche here. Looking a little unlikely they get in before it goes down. Maybe. They actually are confident enough to just go right for this. Or are immediately going to ult. Oh, he's ruptured and running around. Yep. Which means he is not going to be living today. He's going to go right down there. Got a BKB here from Windrunner coming out. Bloodseeker caught in a very awkward position. But they can't stick around long enough to do anything about it. We are going out there to uh, put the... Breaks on the Snapfire. Windrunner are going to go down here. All right. Well, what's better than what's better than four for nothing? How about four for nothing, free T2, and free Roche? I hope they remember. Given that they're all immediately walking to the pit, I'm going to say they probably do. I don't know, some people are walking through the jungle. That's true, but not the main right clickers. Free shard. And he's gonna take Aegis again. Cannot use the shard by definition because she already has one. Be really bad on Undying. Could be actually kinda good on the um on the Weaver here. Yeah, big fan of the Weaver shard. Sure. Could be good for the cool telekinesis as well. I got some options here. Lena's still holding on to it at the moment. His teammates have to show Danny that they've earned the shard before he'll give it up. I actually just put it down right into the uh, into the fountain, so now it's going to be a, f a struggle for who's going to take the shard. Oh, Bloodseeker actually still doesn't have his, and he in fact has a shard queued. So yeah, he's just going to pick it up, take it. So now he's going to have some really fearsome punching power against the Pudge. It's going to be like, uh, it's going to be a very similar situation to, to uh, playing against Lysealer for Pudge now, where he has to consciously position himself in a fight, because even if Matt doesn't want to kill him, even if Bloodseeker has no real desire to kill Pudge at a given moment, if he's down in a fight, he can just turn around, beat up Pudge, and get like his entire HP bar back now. So Pudge has to kind of worry about that, especially considering he has a pretty good amount of fat stacks. He has 12 stacks, so he is quite the HP balloon. has a Vanguard as well, just to emphasize that. Troll World are going to get caught here. And uh, Troll Warlord, I cannot imagine 
is going to live this. Once again, is going to have the uh, the Oracle old, and it's actually going to take out the. Uh, actually, no, this is going really well. They are not positioning themselves well at all on the radiant front here. Yeah, I think that Yule's actually kind of messed things up. Yeah, if the Yule's Dude. didn't come out, that would have so. been a much better fight. Shout out to BBC Pie. I mean, hey, maybe somebody on that team has a Wind Waker. You know, you can't entirely dismiss that possibility, but they don't. <laughs> he doesn't have a Yule Scepter! Also, probably didn't help trying to take a team fight without the Lena that has the Aegis. That was probably not good. Now, well, in fact, Lena has decided that it's time to lose both Aegis and her next life. This is not good. Why does Troll Warlord enjoy this so much? <laughs> Troll Warlord has finished up a Lincoln Sphere here. It's gonna be easier to pop than I think he realizes. But on the other hand, I do think outside of the Soul Rip out of the Undying, pretty much everything, like the worst he can get rid of with the uh, with the Lincoln Sphere is the Rubik Q, which you're not necessarily Rubik W rather, which is not necessarily something that's gonna be falling on you this game. Bloodseeker is gonna pause the game. And now we wait once again. Hey Greg, what did you think of the the, the finals this year? Um, great game, you know. <laughs> um, no, I, I so I actually uh, didn't see the finals. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I was like, uh, I know. I I tapped out after the finals were over, and I was like, oh my god, Greg's streaming something else. Yeah, you know, it's uh. It's a tough life out there. It's true. <laughs> um, but no, no, you know, congratulations to the winners. So. Uh, who won? <laughs> Let me uh, check Discord real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made the I made the roll for them. You know, I had to. It's true. Them, but, uh, you know, I know Kai won. He did. And then, he uh, finally. Apparently, Dusty won. He did. Yep. Dusty, of two, course. Two uh, the, the subject of one of the greatest LD2L memes of all time. Um, I, think I don't know it, if we have this picture saved anywhere. But I it's, think uh, it's been a big season for Dusty. I don't think people realize just what a big factor of the Crusader Knight success Dusty was. After, nice, uh, nice. after a previous win with uh, the Backdoor Boys, where he was definitely a... Hmm. Alright. It's about time for me to DC again. Uh oh. Luckily, that happened during a pause. <laughs> Shoutouts to uh, System Restore for trying to happen four times in the like the last two hours alone for no reason. I promise you, Windows, I don't need a new System Restore right now. I do not need to go back to the glory days of back when my PC was streaming a Dota match. Just own a Mac. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah! Back in it now. Luckily, Maybe not much needs to happen since the pause. They're gonna be just eating this T1 top up here. Which uh, used to give you a free glyph, which I thought was just madness, but now it doesn't. Well, it used to be only the tier ones. Now it's every time you kill something of the yeah, first every new tier. tier that's tier. Which, which I mean, I like, I, I like that system more, you know. Except it's, for the uh, tier fours. I don't think the tier fours give you a free refresh. No, they don't. Um, I like that more. You know, it's it's better at being actually a way for a team to try and turn things around than like just be an annoying, like uh, annoying time wasting mechanic. US Danny Game has just Matt. been murdered by a Wind Ranger. Danny and Matt both gonna go down there in just record time here. Wind Ranger just blinked while ruptured. Yep, and, and died as a result. Promptly died because he was affected by Oracle Ultimate, so his blink wasn't cancelled. But he took like a thousand damage from that blink. So Sad. what might have saved him actually ended up killing him. That's irony for you. Because you wouldn't have been able to blink if he wasn't Oracle ulted. He also would have died earlier if he wasn't Oracle ulted, but still. Mikkel now just annihilating the towers. As Troll Warlord does. 
I, I hate to pat myself on the back here and say how good I am at predicting Dota 2 games, but I think, uh, I think the, the prediction has kind of come to pass at this point for this lineup. Weaver just simply was not able to, uh, to fulfill his duties against a lineup like this. Lena struggled to stay alive for more than three seconds in any fight when the enemy team had any focus on her. It's all kind of down to Bloodseeker, but unfortunately for Matt, something was just not going well for him today. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've so I've played a couple seasons with Jackman. If anyone remembers him, he uh, loved the offlane Bloodseeker, and it's just not very good as a hero. Like, I don't think the hero works in that role very well. Doesn't really get. The I, I think in a game like this one specifically, the Bloodseeker offlane is all right. The problem is, is just the way the team fight coordination has been has just not been to his advantage. He's had to like, you know, Bloodseeker's role in team fights is basically everything. He's got to direct traffic. He's got to make people get into a position where Lena can eat them. He's got to help keep Weaver alive without sacrificing his own life in the process. Speaking of Weaver and alive, he's not anymore. Right, he's got well, nine is... billion things to do, and uh, he kind of struggles to do it here. This cast has been fun, however I must away. I do work in an hour, so I've got to get myself ready to go. Damn. Adios. Anyone know who that guy is? Yeah, nope. who was that guy? So Greg, I don't know if you know this, cause, uh, but but through this season, whoever this guy is has been casting with me under a different name every single week. And I, sometimes really? every, sometimes multiple times. Yes. Change in the same game. And uh, n nobody knows who he is unless unless you read me saying it publicly like a couple of days ago. But I mean, who reads? Or unless yeah. you saw the, uh, the his name in the uh, in the lobby or the chats, but you know. Eh, whatever. I see. I see. So special I mean, thanks. So people should be able to piece it together, shouldn't they? Maybe. Um, the thing is, we've we've strategically made it so that uh, he is he is not casting with anybody who actually recognizes his voice. So. Ah, Except okay. the one time when one person on the Brothers Against NATO knew who he was, and he pretended to be them the entire game, and just said a lot of slander the whole time. <laughs> I offered him, well, I offered that person the opportunity to come cast uh, whatever team that guy was on with me as him, but unfortunately, uh, just never got the opportunity to do that. Ah, uh, well, you're in luck. I don't know anyone in LD2, so I also don't know his voice. Yeah. That's yeah. true. I, you know Matt. Minion. I do know Matt. I would recognize Matt. I would recognize Kai, probably? Oh. No, I've hung out with Kai a couple he, times. He has a very distinct voice, and he laughs like Seth Rogen. I see. So you I definitely. See. You would definitely. I, it's Sorry, exactly I like Seth Rogen, dude. He's just like... <laughs> That's Kai's laugh. I'm telling you. <laughs> I see. Okay. Well, that's fair. I mean, so in this game specifically, we got Matt, Dusty, PVC... Um, Hollywood and Cryptic that I would know in voice yeah, chat. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, all the old time, uh, all the dwellers. Cryptic, the classics. You know, Cryptic played for the team that uh, I was managing this season. He did a very good job. I think uh, if there is one thing in Bean Tin's success. If, if if Dusty is like the unsung hero as far as the success of the Crusader Knights this season, I think Cryptic gets the exact same benefit for Bean Tin. He did. He did some ridiculously good pos 5 work in those games, and I really did not see many people giving him, I think, the credit that he deserves for a lot of those victories. Which is not to say that it's all down to him. I mean, obviously, Matt, Danny, were probably the MVPs of the season for that team. Goodbye, PVC Pot. Probably the MVPs of the team for that season, but, uh, there's definitely some games where without Cryptic's influence, Speedin would not have won the game. I think a disproportionately large amount. Goodbye to the Bloodseeker Courier. Hello to the Stormcrafter. Okay, Pudge in a kind of an awkward spot here. Pudge in a suddenly much more awkward spot, actually. Never mind, Pudge is stupid as hell. So oh, he's just gonna kill everyone now. Well, not Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker's gonna kick it. Oh my god! <laughs> This no, is no, like no. making the up button jump, my man. Radiance top. Oh, my. another question mark. Radiance top 
That was so sad. And while that happened, Troll Warlord took top racks. That is... Oh. Found uh, the Weaver again. I feel like it's a little long. Okay. Man, Troll Warlord going really hard for this one. But they don't have any detection around him, so... Okay. Again, no detection. I don't think... Okay, Weaver accidentally blinks one inch. Oh, no, that's just Flicker. It's okay. got the, the Flicker. Flicker, yeah. Okay. Oh, Weaver's skittering off. I'm gonna go for a Roche attempt here. Looks like I did just get Eye of Scotty. It might be a bit of a turnaround here item for him here if he can use it well in the next fight. Roche is gonna go down in mere moments. He's going to uh, give up an axe. Go to... Probably any of these guys, okay, reasonably. And I was gonna say, uh, actually would be pretty good on Troll Warlord here, being able to <laughs> free up Oracle a little bit for debuffs and be able to awesome. purge things off of enemies. Yeah, it's uh, quite nice. You guys were talking about him not having the BKB earlier. Um, the Troll Axe helps a little bit if he's mostly getting debuffed rather than getting uh, a red stunned a lot. Ooh, blinks right past Kai. I'm okay, gonna go cut the wave back here. Bit unfortunate for the Dire is that is, in fact, the closest wave to where they are. Hollywood's gonna try and put a stop to this, but uh, he is not really equipped to deal with that scenario. Radiant is doing everything they can to try and stay on the map here. They're certainly not just giving this one up. Cryptic gonna try and take over the... Uh-oh. Cryptic gonna try and take over the outpost here. Danny attempts to intercept and dies. I feel like that's unfortunate. I feel like that's unfortunately the almost the summary of Lena's performance in this game so far, which is a shame because when we saw Danny playing the Lena in the season, last time we saw him roll it, he just stomped all over everyone. He was like like 13 and 1, something crazy like that. But this time it just feels like the summary of his uh, game in general is he shows up to try and do something and then dies. Yeah, he had a great start this game. I mean, he had, what, two, three solo kills in lane? Yep. Um, seems like it kind of fell apart a little bit. Yeah, it's like I said, it's just so hard to play lean against some of these guys. Like, it's really hard to be lean in a game with a Pudge in it. It's really hard to be lean in a game with a Troll Warlord in it. Really, the only person that you've got it leg up on until they get BKB is Windrunner, and oops, they got BKB now, and they don't really have anything else but you to worry about with it. Flyback's coming out. I makes it out. That was a pretty sketchy situation there. They're gonna do everything they can to try and extend Troll Warlord's lifetime here. Oracle making the decision to uh, use ult with the Oracle ult on him. It's gonna pay off in a big way. He gets his entire mid or HP bar back, basically. One runner just taking people out in the back line. First life for Troll Warlord's gonna go down here. This team seems to be mostly looking at uh, defensive posture here. Massive friendly creep wave for the Radiant is gonna make any push attempt into this very awkward. And the artillery barrage from the Snapfire is gonna make any defensive efforts here equally awkward. Snapfire is going to armor break the wrong Rex. Oh no, it's a double stun. We have the, uh, another Oracle Elf up for the Troll Warlord here. Gonna take out the Tombstone, gonna take out the Rax. Two lanes now down. Vex says, end the goddamn game, please. Goes fishing, finds Rubik. Goodbye, Rubik. Troll Roller just going to try and uh, kill Weaver in Fountain. Like an actual psychopath, and he's gonna do it successfully. And then the goddamn Oracle ult again! 
Bro, if I was on the uh, if I was on the radiant this game, I would be losing my mind about these uh, these orc wolves. Oh, that's a good abyssal blade there. It's gonna save Snapfire, Doom Bloodseeker. Got like Matt calls the G's, and we're going home. Season 14 has come to a close. That's a pretty good game. This is uh, definitely the best All Star game we've had. I don't ever. ever probably. Hooray! <laughs> Usually it's like. 10 minutes long, and some team does something like level 1 Roche and they all die somehow, and then like just tap out 5 minutes later and we're like, oh, okay. Hey, I mean, in fairness, that didn't really happen in 12 and 13. At least in the serious games. Those. Um, miss those. Here's the final analysis. Uh, Radiant too squishy. Just too goddamn squishy. It's like, uh... They did a good job making sure a damage gap didn't open up. I think, um, I've been saying damage gap the last half of this LD2L se season more than Kennedy said missile gap in 1960, all right? Um, okay. the damage gap has been a very big factor, I think, in the backside of this LD2L season where teams that look really good on paper just cannot actually win the fights. They can live for such a long time, but they just can't actually do enough damage to take out the enemy team in that time, so they just lose control of the fight. This time, we're looking at almost the exact opposite situation, I think, with this Radiant Draft, where you have five of these super squishy... I mean, really, it's like three super squishy heroes between Weaver, Rubik, Lena, that are not going to be able to stand up to much of anything. Bloodseeker is only going to be able to be very tanky quite late into the game, which he was, but so late that it didn't really mean anything, and... Undying is playing pause 5, he's never going to be that tanky. And you had really good heroes to punish that between the Pudge, the Windrunner, the Snapfire. And Oracle took all the glass cannon action that the Radiant could have and just consigned it to the dustbin. And then you have the Troll Warlord who's going to come in and be a wrecking ball. It's hard. It's hard to exist in this game as some of these guys, so... I can't say this was a super surprise, but you know, it's, it's good to see the Roche Riders win one final game. So... With that being said, one last time for Season 14, if you or somebody you know wants to learn Dota 2 at a casual or more competitive level, go to ld2l.gg to sign up today. Uh, In-houses are flying left and right. We've already had some, even though it's been like a week and a half since the uh, season actually ended. Um, Mage 3... I'm not looking at my notes. Who's looking at their notes? Mage 3 sign-ups opening on December 17th. $5 to get in. $3 of that goes to uh, the old starving kids out in Somalia. Um, and by the way, if you if you end up purchasing a ticket, uh, you also get entry into a special little event with me, the caster crew, the boys, right? We're going to be uh, hosting a little bit of private Jackbox-type action. So if you want to get a slot reserved for that, um, once you buy your ticket, let me know, and I'll deal you right into that. Uh, and that's it. Reg, you got anything to say? Oh, no. Thanks for, uh, all your casting this season. Um, shout out to Hollywood as well for his continued efforts, uh, putting together the All-Star game and, um, you know, helping to bring the ld community together. Shout outs to Hollywood for, uh, going, like, oh and a million on Marcy last night and giving me high blood pressure. Uh, so, there we go. We'll see you next season, everybody.